Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Pole Barn Project. Um, today I'm gonna to do a short video talking about some of the things that can go wrong when you're framing with green lumber. And uh, you know, in the past I've done videos on uh, things you need to do right in order to frame with green, green lumber and showed how for the most part, everything goes okay. There aren't issues if you plan ahead to accommodate uh, the green lumber. Uh, but uh, I ran into a situation here on the pole barn project where things went wrong with green lumber and I thought it'd be instructive to, to talk about that real quickly. Uh, before I do that though, I just want to catch you up on the project briefly. I've got the roof completed on the other side of the pole barn, which is basically uh, one half of the original roof and then the addition that's all been sheathed, uh, protected and, and uh, shingled. Uh, so that's done. That's really good. I like to have you know, the project uh, dried in, protected from um, rain and snow as soon as possible. We're, we're getting into the part of the year where uh, we could see snow. So uh, it's good to have at least half of the roof on. And uh, now I'm over here on the other side of the original structure, uh, getting this roof ready uh, to take sheathing and, and then uh, get shingles. And hopefully that'll happen next week. We've got rain. Uh, looks like a nor'easter coming this weekend and so I might put some temporary protection up or even put the old metal panels up with a few screws just to keep a lot of rain off the structure but uh, hopefully by next week the, the, the final roof will be on this and as I was getting ready to prepare this structure for for the new roof one of my first steps um, was to run a string down the eave line along the rafter tails to make sure they're in alignment because I'm going to put up a fascia board and um, you know if any of these rafter tails were a little bit out of whack you want to adjust them before you put up your fascia so that it comes out nice and straight and smooth and um, surprisingly I don't know I got one two three four I got about uh, 15, 15 rafters here um, the majority of them were perfect just nice nice alignment with the string but these three in the middle were way out of whack and um, couldn't figure why I was a little concerned that maybe the structure had sagged and so I checked the ridge line that's perfectly straight I checked the width it's it's consistent with with uh, the way things were designed so this roof has not sagged or drooped or anything and um, so I got to looking closer at these three particular rafters and noticed that the knot patterns had all aligned on these rafters, which told me they came from the same cant, the same log. And uh, I got to thinking, you know, I've, I've sawed into some logs where uh, the lumber goes wild, either as you're sawing or, you know, a couple weeks later uh, as the lumber is drying out. and. Uh, um, so I started looking at these in more detail and realized that these three rafters came out of the same log and all three of them had curved like a banana. They had gone down in the middle of the roof and then the tails had gone up. And you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'll, I'll put some uh, close up inset here, but this is about a, uh, this tail's about a half inch high, three quarters high, three quarters high. So these three rafters had kind of turned into a banana they drooped in the middle the tails came up and uh, I noticed that when I put put my string on and so uh, now is the time to correct any issues like this before I put OSB in an asphalt roof because that'll make any waviness noticeable and you don't want to see that um, and so what I ended up deciding to do in this case was um, uh, you know and I have loads of, of uh, my my own sawn two by sixes, but they were sawn a couple months ago. I still consider them green, so I kind of bit the bullet, went out to the store and bought three kiln dried two by sixes, and basically I sistered those up uh, to the uh, three boards that had drooped, and uh, put a ton of nails in there to to sister them up nice. And what these have done is they basically raised up my roof purlins by uh, on about three-eighths of an inch at the most over here over these drooped rafters in the middle and then they've dropped the tails by you know anywhere from a half inch to three-quarter inch on the end and they've brought everything into alignment and everything's nice and straight um, 
and as part of that process I went through and replaced a couple of the purlins which had taken a bit of a set when those raft rafters drooped um, this one is an original one that was okay um, and then the ones up top were okay but uh, these these middle three purlins uh, that's new lumber as well and uh, got everything nice and straight nice and sighted in so this is an example of what can go wrong with green lumber even if you do everything right up front in construction and this is the kind of thing that's almost out of your control I mean this is lumber that was straight when I sawed it when I milled it it was straight when I cut the rafters and put them up but sometime in the last two and a half years as this structure has been out here um, these guys which all came from a, the same log uh, they all went to some tendency, some internal stress, some equilibrium, which was more of the shape of a banana than a straight board. And so, um, you know, this is the kind of thing that's pretty much out of your control when you're, you're framing with green lumber. The interesting thing here is one of the reasons I like a rafter purlin type of a framing structure uh, with green lumber is that you're really constraining everything. You would think this is going to prevent it from moving. but you know there was enough internal stress uh, enough internal forces in in these particular rafters from that log uh, that they curved anyways and and they went a little bit wild and so um, you know this is one of those things that happens it's it's kind of out of your control had I left this roof alone I probably never would have even noticed it in fact you know it's been up for two and a half years I never noticed anything was was out of whack and so um, it wasn't enough of a disruption where it caused any leaks with the original metal roof. You know, it would have put some load on the screws and the gaskets. Never had any leak issues. Um, in fact, when I pulled the panels off, I, I look at every screw and just to get an idea how well they sealed. Everything's, you know, sealed great. So I probably would have never noticed this. You know, I would have left it alone. It probably would have been fine for decades. Um, but when you come in here and you're doing new construction or you know uh, uh, remodeling renovations and you're marrying up new structures with old structures and putting on a new kind of roof you know you start checking things and that's when you see things are out of whack and uh, that's that's pretty much why I corrected it so you know again in the past I've done these videos how you can frame with green lumber and do okay this is an example where uh, it, you know, the green lumber came back to bite me two and a half years later during a, an addition and remodeling project and uh, needed to be corrected. So uh, that's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for watching.